I'm sure the time lapse looks very much like uh, reverse passing, like I'm basically just stopped and everybody's flying by me. Today we're doing a quick efficiency test. We're going to be seeing how efficient the Model Y is at 60 miles per hour on the interstate. So it's definitely going to be a slow one, but <laughs> we want to see how efficient it is at 60 miles per hour. So basically if you were in need of some extra range and you wanted to make sure you got to the next supercharger or whatever it may be, your destination, if you drop it down to 60 miles per hour, how well are you going to do at 60 miles per hour? We do have the long range all wheel drive Model Y with the 19 inch Gemini wheels. So they are the most efficient wheels because they do have the aero covers on as well. Although I have not compared them to the 20 inch induction wheels or the performance wheels, but it is my understanding that both of those wheels should be less efficient than the Gemini wheels with aero covers. Whatever the case may be, this should be the most efficient combination of wheels on the Model Y as well as we are going to be going particularly slow on the interstate. So definitely going to be interesting to see if we can get uh, some good efficiency. I really want to see if we would go 60 miles per hour, if we would be able to get more than the 316 miles rated range at that speed. That would be interesting to see. So we're definitely going to check that out. And also I want to check out my new camera setup a little bit, try it out here in the neighborhood to see if some of that bouncing is taken care of or not. And then uh, we'll check back on the efficiency out on the interstate, we're just going to go probably 20, 30 miles one direction and then 30 miles the other direction so we can take care of any elevation changes. And I don't think we're going to have too much trouble with getting slowed down by traffic because we will probably be the ones slowing everybody else down. But I will stay in the right lane, of course, and uh, we'll see how it goes. We did get the tires aired up all at 42 PSI with that Jethax air pump that I reviewed a, a while back. All right, so let's get started. All right, so the road is particularly bumpy here in the neighborhood. So I'm hoping we get a good idea of how it looks with this camera setup versus the one I used the other day. Just wanted to see if it jumps around a lot or whether it is pretty clear. So let me know in the comments below if you like this camera setup and whether I should use it for future videos where I am talking about autopilot and what is displayed on the screen for autopilot when we encounter different items. I can definitely tell that the camera is bouncing around. So that should be enough to see if it was uh, good this setup or not. And I'm going to go ahead and switch it over to the other camera for the rest of the drive. All right, so here we are getting on the interstate and we're going to get up to the maximum speed of 60 miles per hour and everybody's going to hate us, but it's all for you. It's all for science, right? We're going to reset the trip meter. I'm going to wait until we get uh, out here on the road where we want to be. And then I will set it again. Let these people get around me. They're definitely going to want to be ahead of me and not behind me. So that's good. And we'll go ahead and reset the trip meter right there at that sign. And probably going to just wait until the trip meter gets nice and... Uh, steady at a certain watt hours per mile before we consider turning around and going back and then I'll try to do the same number of miles back so that we can account for any of that elevation change that we had.
So we've done over 30 miles now and we're getting close to staying around 200 watt hours per mile. We were averaging pretty well around 180 uh, watt hours per mile, which is really, really efficient, uh, especially for this larger car. Um, but we did end up going uphill for quite a while there and that got us over 200 for a little bit. But now we're averaging back around 200. I am going to go ahead and turn around uh, right here at the next exit, which is just under a mile away. And then I will switch it to south on the trip meter and reset it for the way back. Should get another 32 miles or close to two, 32 miles on the way back. And then we'll average the two numbers together for the watt hours per mile for efficiency. And I'll use that to calculate how many miles rated range we would actually get if we drove 60 miles for the entire battery, which uh, to be honest, it has been very slow. I think I've made a few people mad, but then again, there are some people who just, uh, you know, hang out back there and kind of enjoy it for some reason. So I don't know, maybe they're, they're not paying attention and they just got behind somebody, who knows. So here it is, I'm gonna call it 198 watt hours per mile on northbound. 32 miles, 198 watt hours per mile. So definitely a nice efficiency for going 60 miles per hour. I am not sure whether we are gonna be going uphill or downhill overall on the way back. So we'll see if we get better than 198 or worse on the way back. And then we will average it together. Now we're going south. Nice and slow, of course. And we are up to 60 miles per hour. Make sure we get merged here, and I'm going to reset it right there. Should be able to get 32 miles out of that before we have to exit on our way back. So we've gone over 30 miles southbound now and unfortunately it looks like 30 watt hours per mile worse than our northbound trip. I'm assuming the elevation uh, changed not in our favor. Maybe I can figure that out, look that up and see what the elevation change was from one exit to the other. But anyway, it's looking like close to 230 watt hours per mile going southbound for the same 30 uh, two miles should be able to get 32 miles here before my exit definitely not as good going this direction so that is why we went both directions to average out or even out that elevation change which I'm sure had an impact but nonetheless if we are somewhere in the neighborhood of 215 watt hours per mile average that is very good so here it is, 32 miles, 234 watt hours per mile. So 234 watt hours per mile versus 198. So you average those two together and should be about 216 watt hours per mile which is very good for an SUV but again we were going particularly slow I uh, don't think I noticed anybody screaming at me or anything but uh, they definitely were quick to get around me sometimes and I'm sure the time-lapse looks very much like 
uh, reverse passing. Like I'm basically just stopped and everybody's flying by me. So we were definitely going slow. Not, uh, not a comfortable speed to go really on the interstate because, uh, because you're kind of, you're just kind of in the way of other people, especially with a 70 mile per hour zone. I mean, you're going 10 under, that's definitely really slow. So wouldn't suggest going 10 under the speed limit unless you are in need of getting that extra range. If you go drop your speed down to 60 miles per hour, you can get some really good efficiency. And that's true of any car, obviously gas powered or hybrid or fully electric. Any car, you're obviously going to do better efficiency wise if you're going a slower constant speed. So definitely a good thing to keep in mind if you are on a road trip and concerned about that. All right, so we made it back finally. Yes, we were going very slow, but we did make it back. It went about 64 miles round trip. So we got some pretty good numbers, I think. We were uh, kept the climate around 68 to 70 degrees, and it was 80 to 84 degrees outside. So pretty comfortable wasn't running too hot or anything so that was good and we did go apparently downhill on the northbound and uphill on the southbound loop and so ended up with 198 watt hours per mile on the northbound trip and then 234 watt hours per mile on the southbound leg of the trip which averages out to 216 watt hours per mile which I believe is about 14 watt hours per mile less than what you should be expecting to get if you want to get the full 316 miles range of the Model Y, which means if you are going 60 miles per hour in your Model Y for the entire battery, which is really slow, but you know, if you needed to get uh, somewhere and you're worried about getting there, you could go 60 miles per hour and you would be able to go around 336 miles on one charge, <laughs> at least by uh, what I calculated out. So, you know, check my math, see if you agree, if that is correct. Obviously, you know, if you were going to go 50 miles per hour, I'm sure you could do even better on a full battery on a Model Y, long range, all wheel drive, 19 inch Gemini wheels. If you go 60 miles per hour for the entire time, you should be able to get close to 336 miles on a charge, which is fantastic. Uh, it's, it's really nice. But again, you got to go really slow to do that. So hope you liked this video. If you did, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.